Welcome to Advanced Mission Training. This operation originally took place in Sydney. The target was Calvin Ritter, infamous cat burglar, also known as the Sparrow. You will need to infiltrate the yacht, isolate and eliminate your target and exfiltrate, all without arousing suspicion. And remember, as an ICA agent, you are the most dangerous person in any room. But blunt force will get you nowhere in this business. And a true assassin never calls attention to himself. Good luck, Initiate. Hey guys, still here and welcome to Hitman 3. As previous tests have established, you exhibit an unusual level of enhanced sensory perception. Use your I'm going to be playing a couple of videos of Hitman 3. This is to get to the Hitman 3 freelancer part. More on that at the end of the video. Now this came out a few months ago, I believe about two months, and um, Hitman is a game that I played long, long ago, but I haven't played the recent iterations. I thought that it would be interesting and fun to play a bit of this, especially considering, well, stealth. I mean, it suits the channel very, very nicely. I gotta try and get to somebody, eliminate them, and have nobody be any the wiser that it was either me or that the person has been eliminated. So, let's go and sneak mm. aboard this ship. Sneak up this is part of the tutorial mission, though. So, it's not going to be terribly complex. Uh, you have, as with most Hitman games, various ways of completing the mission. And that is something I really, really like. You can play how you desire. That's a first. Sometimes you might want to go in guns blazing. Um, it is generally not the best way to play. And it's generally not going to give you the best rewards. Not bad, Initiate. Before you move on, I suggest you hide your tracks. You have a much greater chance of success if your actions go undetected. The toilet should do the trick. Now, we're not going to hide this guy inside the toilet bowl. That would be a bit gross. No, we're going to put him inside the cabinets, as something you can do with most bodies. Interestingly, um, a cabinet such as that one up there doesn't immediately become full if you just put one body inside. And... Right. A question I personally have is how does the guy, in a condition of being knocked out, actually keep standing up? Or is he leaning? I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, we are going to make our way over to the loading dock here. And now that I'm actually dressed as a maintenance worker, I can get in. First I had a bit of a look around to see if there's anything useful down here. Turns out, nothing as of right now, Later, so I can just get into the loading bay. Oh. At this point, we find an enforcer. These guys are going to see right through your disguise. Don, that mechanic with his back turned, he's what we call an enforcer. He knows his crew and he'll see right through your disguise, so stay out of his line of sight. Best not to mess with right. that guy. Now for the tricky part. Start by locating your target. Intel suggests he's around the bar area. You're in. Well done, Initiate. There's the contact. Or there's the mark, really. Mr. Ritter. I decided to listen in on this conversation to see if maybe I could do something with it, but it didn't really seem to have too many implications on the mission. Also, the game takes part in 1997. At least this part of the game. So if you find some slightly older things, such as people discussing texting, this is why. No, 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 no mechanics in here. Touching stuff and getting oil everywhere. Come on, please. Now the ship's divided into a couple of areas. Some you can access with the current uniform or the current disguise. You some you cannot. Time, you? So I can get into the kitchen, all right. That's okay. But I cannot get up onto the upper decks. Not if I'm a mechanic. Just having a look around here. And I'm actually interested in this guy's uniform. There's also a hammer. Um, I could just throw this, or I can use it as a distraction, or I can use it as a weapon, depending on what you need and how you decide to play the game. Now, at this point, uh, the cook got a little suspicious. My space so I decided to leave him be for a few seconds. And he seemed perfectly happy. And with the enhanced vision, you can see that the mark is coming up. So this guy is going to take a little nap. I am not trying to kill these people off. I am just trying to subdue them 
and then take their disguise, or rather take okay. their uniform Unlike as a disguise. Dynamics, the cabin crew is allowed upstairs access. I see what you're getting at. Very unorthodox. I like it. Now, I didn't quite kill the guy, but putting somebody in an unconscious state and then throwing him into a freezer... I can see how that might be construed as murder. I decided to uh, test my throwing skills here just to figure out how that works in the game, but I don't actually need that particular item right now. A bit of a story. Here you are, Mr. Norfolk. Enjoy the party. When you're ready, just grab a hold of Bird over there. He'll take you upstairs. Oh well, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Now my mark is meeting this Mr. Norfolk. He just overheard day, talking at sir. the bar. I just didn't know that at the time. Deck. Now we're getting somewhere. Ah, but according to Intel, Ritter is another enforcer who picks his own cabin crew. So tread carefully. Now this is going to be quite uh, important to note because the Mark is going to be aware that I am not who I say I am. I am not part of his crew, so I cannot get too close to him. Sorry, sailor. You're not coming through here. And this private room is guarded by this guard, which is not allowing me through. So I'm just going to do a bit more exploring of the rest of the ship and see what else I can use. Now you see those life raft holders at the end of the deck? I can use those. I can accidentally, sort of, have one of these things drop onto the target if they are uh, happening to walk underneath it. So that is an option. And this, by the way, is a weapons chest, so that if somebody finds a weapon that doesn't belong there, you can always find it, or they will try to put it back on the weapons locker, or the, the weapons chest. I decided to have a little chat with this guy and take his disguise, which I thought was going to be an interesting upgrade over my previously disguise, so that I can now access even more areas of the deck. I mean... I thought that it might be useful to, or it might be um, a sort of ranking system where you have the cabin crew, uh, you have the mechanics as low level, mechanics, or sorry, cabin crew as medium, and then the guards nice as high level. If we win, you can fix me a drink. Anyway, sounds like Ritter is about to have a private meeting with the gentleman in white. This could be useful. Uh, you can see this is definitely a training mission because the whole ship is of course made of wood and so is the helicopter. The mark is coming up, and fortunately the game right now tells me exactly who this is. In future missions, and thus future videos, that will not be the case. I will have to do my own research and figure out who the target is. There's the guy, and the guy in white is his uh, business contact. So I decided to just listen in and see what these guys are up to. my usual scene technology. Most of my clients are art collectors. So what is it anyway? Some kind of reactor? Well, uh, not just a reactor, Mr. Ritter. It's more of a revolution. Fifty years ahead of its time. Maybe even more. Maybe 75 or 100. I'm not exactly sure what this guy is being sold, but I don't really care. My objective is to eliminate Ritter. And with his contact actually not paying attention and looking out the window at a blank wall, I can now actually engage the target. Wait, glass cutter? No. Park eliminated, ballistic kill, high shot. Now head calmly towards an exit. At this point I was figuring out, okay, how do I holster my weapon? I don't know. So I'm still gonna be walking around with my weapon. I didn't even take care to hide Mr. Ritter's body, so the ship, ideally, or realistically, should go on high alert. It isn't. And I can just calmly walk off the ship. Nobody knows that I did it. Nobody knows... Well, maybe maybe the business contact knows that Ritter is dead. But beyond that, nobody seems to give a damn. At this point, of course, you can run away, but I thought that would just erase suspicion, so I'm not going to do that. Advanced mission training complete. And may I say, elegantly done, Initiate. I guess my hunch was right about you. I look forward to the final test.
How did you know? I told you he had talent. His stats are off the charts. Such skills and reflexes. They could only be the result of previous training. Power like that, with no moral restraint. He could be dangerous. I thought that was rather the point, sir. All agents have weak spots, Miss Burnwood. Pressure points to keep them in check. But this one... Perhaps it would be better to just... Give me a chance, sir. Give him a chance. I will take full responsibility. Very well. It's your show. So, I am more Welcome or less going to be in the program, but I get another run. Every challenge you face can be overcome in multiple ways. Complete this exercise again, this time attacking it from a different angle. Vary your strategy. Improvise. We will be watching. Now, this is part of what they call freeform training. This means that you can complete a mission in another way, or mostly, most of the time, a whole bunch of ways. So, you can decide what type of challenge you want to take on, how you want to assassinate the target. It is entirely up to you. It's just that all of these rewards, or all of these challenges, give you a whole bunch of rewards in the form of XP. So, I'm going to try and do this again and get a whole bunch of these completed. This time I also get to pick a couple of different items. You can see that I have the remote explosive, which is part of one of the challenges. I can get a lockpick, I can get a flashbang grenade, I can get coins. Now I want the coins with me because the coins can be used as a distraction and are part of the freeform training rewards. So I definitely want that. I don't care about the remote explosive. Um, I think it's a bit too overt. Sure, it would get the job done. Absolutely. But it is not befitting my playstyle of trying to be sneaky. Now, I saw that there was one way onto the ship that I used. Um, the other part is the up ramp where the two guards are. The one that I used to exfil. But there's also this one. So, let's have a look at this gate and use the lockpick that I have to try and open it. This is, however, considered an illegal action. And this means that if somebody catches you doing this, you're going to be considered a hostile target. So, in this situation, uh, tread carefully. Also, the game says, hey, if you go in here with your current outfit, you're going to be trespassing. So, it's time to give our favorite mechanic another visit. Having put on his uniform, I'm now able to go in here without any challenges. So, I'm now part of the mechanic crew. I can walk about as I see fit. So, I now have another way of infiltrating the ship. First, let's have a look at the storage, because one of the objectives had me go after some rat poison so that I can poison the drink of the target and use that to actually get this guy to get sick. It won't kill him, but it will make him sick, which can lead you to going after him with another method of um, elimination. Another task I had, or challenge I had, was to distract a guard with a generator. And look, a generator. So I can turn this thing off, which is again considered an illegal action. It's going to draw unwanted attention, which means I might have to take out the guard entirely. But I'm just going to have the guard figure out, hey, the generator's been stopped. This is going to pull the guard away. This is vital to the next plan of the infiltration that I currently want to use. The challenge is now complete. It's going to give me a bit of XP. It's going to increase my mastery level. And with the guard out of the way, I can move up to the side of the ship. This means I can now hang off of this ledge and I can vault over that little thing up there, scale the wall, and I'm aboard. Thankfully, nobody noticed. So, uh, a bit of a weird way of infiltrating the ship, and had there been more people paying attention, it would have been worse. But so far, it worked out. So the first thing I do, um, as I'm just exploring the game or exploring the map, I go right back down. But this time, I'm on the other side of the door, so I could have just, you know, opened the door. Oh well. Another thing I was supposed to find was a crew member suit. The cabin crew uniform, and you can find that right here. So now that I'm going to get a different disguise, I'm once again going to be allowed to different locations. So, much like I said before, you can play the game as you desire. If you want to knock out a crew member, you can. If you just look around the environment and figure out, ah, that is where the stuff is that I need. I need that disguise. Then you can do that. 
Here's the rat poison. So that's going to be one of the items that I need to potentially poison the guy's drink. And the game now explains that there are three types of poisons. This type is an emetic poison, which means the guy's going to get sick. He's going to find a toilet and that might give you some opening to take him out. There are also other types of poison, but for now I don't really need those. What I do need is a way to holster this particular item. A little while later I'm dangerously close to my mark and I'm trying to figure out where this guy is having his drink so that I can poison it. I have the rat poison in hand and I can see where the mark is but I cannot approach him too close because he is an enforcer. He knows that I am not who I say I am. So I'm going to have to be careful. I cannot approach this guy and just walk up to him, put something in his drink and make him disappear. So now I take a bit of a leap. Uh, I go around the bar walk up to his drink and poison it. Again, it's an emetic poison. It is not going to instantly eliminate the guy. He's not going to have uh, some extremely bad effects to it. He's going to get a bit sick though. So that might give me an opening. Unfortunately, the guy just walked away. He is going to be meeting with this man over here. So in order for me to have completed that particular type of challenge, I would have had to poison the drink before. So with some of these challenges, you're going to be on the clock because now my target is meeting Mr. Norfolk. A little while later, I am back to the meeting between Mr. Norfolk and Mr. Ritter. And I decided to take Mr. Ritter out the old fashioned way. I'm going to be using the Garot, the fiber wire. Now, with Norfolk looking away, I can just have a little chat with this guy, garrot him, and that will be the kill. Now, this does mean that the other guy is going to be uh, slightly unhappy by the time that I talk to him, or by the time that he's going to try to figure out why his contact isn't actually chatting. So, I'm just going to subdue him. I don't need to murder him. I don't have to fully take him out. I just thought that, you know, I have to disguise myself as Mr. Norfolk. Um, it just turns out that you don't need to do that before, or you need to do that before the meet, not after. You need to try and become Mr. Norfolk so that you can actually turn yourself into a very, very close target. Or you can, well, yeah. You can position yourself as Mr. Norfolk and immediately be introduced to your target. And apparently, your target, Mr. Ritter, doesn't actually see through the disguise of being Norfolk. Now, let's also bring this guy into the same cabinet so that I clean up the mess that I have made. This guy is uh, going to be probably waking up in a bit of a sweat, considering that he's standing right next to somebody who just got killed. Uh, his neck might be a bit of a mess. I'm not sure if you're going to be spurting blood, but uh, well, at any rate, he's not going to be too happy about it. Now, some of the other items that I still needed on my list was to distract a guard with a coin. So if you have somebody that you need to distract, you can just toss a coin and, uh, well, potentially other items as well. And these things will alert guards and have guards just focus on some particular item or particular direction, depending on where you throw the coin relative to their position. So this guard's distracted and that gives me the completion of that particular objective. Now, again, you can play the game as you see fit. And that brings me to the next part, which is the way to play the game that I'm going to be doing in the next video. Freelancer. Here is how that works. Hi, welcome to the new game mode, Hitman 3 Freelancer. In this new roguelike game mode, you once again take on the role of Agent 47, the world's deadliest assassin. As a freelancer, you must take on various crime syndicates to keep the world in balance, gain new items, mercers and mastery to become the ultimate freelancer. We are bringing a lot of new things with this game mode, and one of them is your brand new safe house, which functions as your hub for planning your missions or just taking a breather in between gigs. Welcome to Freelancer. A successful run in Freelancer consists of taking down four crime syndicate leaders of your choosing. Pick the syndicate you wish to go after. As you identify and take down their lower members one after the other, you end up forcing their leader out of hiding, giving you a one-time opportunity to eliminate them in a showdown. What that is, we'll get to a bit later. This is your campaign progress. And as you can see, 
we need to take on two contracts to get to our first showdown and eliminate our first syndicate. Each syndicate has a syndicate type attached to it. And each syndicate type rewards different playstyles with unique challenges for you to complete for extra payout. So choose wisely. Let's pick the investor as our first target. Your run will increase in difficulty after each completed showdown. Be careful, because as mentioned, Freelancer is a roguelike game mode. So if you fail a mission, you lose all the weapons and items you brought with you and half of your hard-earned mercers. But the campaign won't fail. All territories will however though become alerted and they'll know that you are coming. But if you fail a showdown, you do not only lose your equipped weapons, items and half of your mercers, you also fail the current campaign and have to start all over from scratch. Each completed mission grants you XP for your overall mastery. And if you do the optional payout objectives, you'll also get mercers. Mercers are the in-game currency used to purchase new weapons and freelancer tools. The harder it is, the more mercers you get. This is your center of operations. This is where you plan your missions, test your guns, choose your starting disguises and more. But as you can see, it's pretty barren right now. But over time, this will become a worthy place for Agent 47 to repair. But we don't have that much right now. But luckily, we got our old faithful ICA-19 Classic Baller. It's not much, but it'll get the job done. Weapons can be purchased from suppliers and found on locations. If there's a rarity attached to a weapon, you can bring it back and place it on your gun rack and use it for future contracts. Now, let's go on our first mission so that we can corner the leader and get to our first showdown. Welcome to Sapienza. Every time you start in Freelancer, you start at a random starting location. Sometimes that's completely safe and other times, just like now, deep in hostile territory. When you look at the map in Freelancer, you'll notice many new markers. Here we have couriers, suppliers and safes. Couriers have mercers on them and suppliers got some cool new weapons and Freelancer tools that you can purchase. And safes can also be worth a visit, if you can crack them, that is. Before we go to visit a supplier, Let's find a courier to get some economy up and running. Now we've got some mercers, let's visit the supplier. In Freelancer, suppliers can be located multiple places on each location, each with unique items for you to purchase. If you got the mercers, they're quite worth a visit. We got enough mercers for a remote Semtex block. Let's get that. It might be useful down the line. You need more? You know where I am. It's time to find our target. Luckily, we know our way around. So, it's time to do the thing we do best. First mission is done, and we even completed some of our optional payout objectives. Let's go back to our safe house and prepare for our next mission. When we complete a mission, as mentioned, carried gear with rarity is brought back to the safe house with us. You can drop the gear to place it in storage or keep it in your inventory and bring it with you on your next mission. We've now gained some mastery. Mastery will over time unlock things like the upper levels of our safe house, new interior, a wardrobe for us to change our starting disguises, a shooting range and more. With mastery, you can customize various parts of your safe house to match how you think Agent 47 should live. The more mastery you get, the more will unlock in and around your safe house. Going on a mission without any items can be tough. But after you complete your first mission, you'll unlock the supply crate. It will provide you with three randomized items and you can pick one of them. Keep an eye on your optional payout objectives for your current contract. One of these items might help you achieve them. Now, let's take on our next mission so that we can get to our first showdown. We've now unlocked our first showdown. We have now cornered the syndicate leader, the investor, and they're located in Dartmoor. Before we go there to find them, let's use our newly unlocked intel wall. This explains who our common target is. Study it, 
it will only benefit you on what's to come. In this case, we know the investor's agenda, tells and looks. This makes it way easier for us to locate the real target. There are many lookalikes and other dangers lurking in a showdown, so we must be careful. And the further we are in our campaign, the harder it gets. But this first one should be manageable for a skilled freelancer like us. In showdowns, you must identify and eliminate the syndicate leader, in this case, the investor. You got the intel, so it's up to you to locate the syndicate member. You must find suspects and compare their appearances and behaviors against your available intel. Then, take out your mark when you're confident of their identity. Remember to visit a supplier and use some of your hard-earned mercers. Some of their items Need might it. come in handy. Need anything? In your inventory, you will also find your new suspect camera. Use this to tag suspects in order to narrow down the search for the syndicate leader. Okay, here's one of the suspects. First up, this dude smokes and does not fit our mark. I'll mark them as a non-suspect. Hmm, second suspect reads too much. That does not fit our intel. They're not the one. We just got alerted that there are assassins nearby, so we have to be extra careful. Assassins are strong NPCs that are hiding in plain sight and protecting the suspects. But FYI, they don't always protect your target, but they hit hard, so you want to stay clear of them. Narrowing down the search, we finally found the main suspect. This is the investor. Okay, let's take him out while the coast is clear. We made it. Now, let's locate the exit and get back to our safe house. Our first showdown was successful, and we now eliminated our first syndicate leader. We got new items, weapons we can place on the gun rack, and a new reward crate to open. Reward crates gives you a randomized weapon or item for each completed showdown, and the chances for getting a better item or weapon increases the further you get in your current campaign. In addition to that, we also have new unlocks to our safe house, and we also unlocked prestige objectives. With prestige objectives, you can add a tougher layer on your missions to get more mercers, if you got the skills. Now it's time to progress in our current campaign to get more mastery, mercers, items and weapons. The contracts and showdowns in front of us will be harder, so approach with caution. Remember, if you fail or get wounded on a mission, you lose all your equipped weapons and freelancer items and half of your hard-earned mercers. But the campaign won't fail. Territories will, however, be alerted. But if you fail doing a showdown, the leader escapes, and you'll not only lose your equipped weapons, items, and half of your mercers, but you'll also lose all the progress made in that current run. It's expensive to fail a mission, but Freelancer is all about high risk, high reward. There are many new ways to explore the world of assassination with this game mode. New ways to play, new targets to execute, new items to unlock, and more. It's time for you to become the ultimate freelancer. So that is Hitman Freelancer, and that is what I'm going to be playing for the next couple episodes. Now, preemptive on this series, I'm not sure how long it's going to be. It is going to depend on the views. This is something that I make a living with, and if the views just simply aren't there, then I'm, well, left with very few options but to just axe the series. Anyway, I hope you guys will enjoy it. I hope you guys will join me on this adventure as a freelance assassin. And I hope that we can get through the campaign as far as possible. Thanks for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon for the next.